Ayan, good morning po sa bawat isa sa ating naririto. Ayan, naanyaha ko po ang lahat na tumayo. Sumamo Pag-ing dapat mo Ikaw ay mamastan Makalika at sa'yo ay pumisa Ang puso ko'y dinudulog sa'yo Nagsusumamo Pag-ing dapating mong Ikaw ay mamastan Makalika at sa'yo Wagas na pagsin 
Panginoon sa inyong harapan, oh God. Kahit ano pong estado ng buhay namin, Panginoon, kahit, kahit ito lang kami, Panginoon, kahit limitado kami, Panginoon, pero binibigay namin sa iyo ang buhay namin, Panginoon. Loobin niyo na maging banal niyo po kaming tahanan, Panginoon. Kami po ay nagpapakumbaba sa inyo, Panginoon. Kalooban namin na gamitin niyo po ang buhay namin, oh God. Hallelujah, wala po kaming may pagmamalaki sa iyo, Panginoon. Wala kaming maibibigay sa iyo, kundi ang aming buhay na nagpapasakop sa iyo, na andang sumunod sa iyo, Panginoon. Kung ano man yung nais mo sa buhay namin, Panginoon. Bilang isang iglesia, Lord, kaming lahat na nandito ngayon, Lord God. Binibigay namin sa iyo yung buhay namin. We give our lives to you. We give our heart to you, O oh Lord. Have your way with us, O oh God. Have your way. Let your will be done in our lives, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Katagpuin niyo po kami, Panginoon, sa kabuuan ng gawain na ito. Gamitin niyo po lahat ng programs, Lord, mula sa worship, sa message, Lord, sa lahat, Panginoon, na magsisiganap, Panginoon. Hallelujah sa worship team, kay Pastor Warwick, Lord God, sa iyong lingkod, Panginoon. Hallelujah sa lahat, Panginoon, ang gaganap ngayong umagang ito, Panginoon. Hayaan niyo po na maging instrumento niyo kami, Panginoon. More of you and less of us, oh God. Hallelujah, hindi kami makita, pero yung glory mo, oh God, yung presence mo, Panginoon, yung love mo, yung faithfulness mo, yung goodness mo, Panginoon, yun ang makita po namin lahat sa umagang ito, physical man or online, oh God. Hallelujah. Wag mo po hayaan na uuwi kami, Panginoon, na hindi na refresh yung aming mga puso, na mahalin ka, Panginoon, hanggang sa iyong muling pagbabalik. Hallelujah. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa umagang ito, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Sige po tayo po ay tumako sa ating praise and worship. So bago yun, pwede po tayong magkamayan sa isa't isa. Let's all welcome each other. Let's welcome our guests, Pastor Warwick, Tita Divine, and Tito Ariel.
I just got kahit holy ka Lord God you choose to reach out for us salamat Panginoon dahil kami Panginoon ay makasalanan pero dahil sa ginawa mo sa krus kami inabot mo na yung kabanalan o Diyos you share it with us your righteousness and holiness with us oh God salamat po Panginoon thank you for an ending love oh God salamat po sa iyong mga pagpapala Panginoon salamat sa iyong uh, katapatan ng iyong pag-iibig oh Diyos thank you for your uh, goodness oh Lord Jesus salamat po Panginoon at patuloy po namin Lord God na binabalik sa iyo ang pinakamataas na papuri at magsamba at pasasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus Amen and Amen Sige po, maaari na po tayong makaupo. Ayan, sige po. Ayan, happy Sunday po. Masaya po ba kayo? Happy Sunday po. Ayan, bago po tayo tumako sa ating, uh, magtuloy-tuloy sa ating gawain, uh, tayo muna po ay dadako sa ating Tyson offering. Pero bago po yun, uh, yung papel po sa envelope natin, makikita po natin yun sa prod table. At sulatan po natin, no? sulatan po natin yung papel. Ano daw po gagawin sa papel? Susulatan. Ayan, sige. Uh, dumako na po tayo sa ating Tyson offering na pangunahan ni Sister J. Hello. Ayan, good morning po sa lahat. Sinatawagan ko si Bunay para mag-interpret. <laughs> Ayan, um, tayo po ay nasa uh, ating tithes and offering. No? Ito po ay isang mahalagang bahagi ng ating uh, service. Meron po tayong exhortation sa ating tithes and offering. Sabi dito, how titers open the heaven over their lives. Ayan, paano daw po, paano daw po, Amen po. Ayan. Ano ba ibig sabihin? So, para daw po mabubuksan yung uh, pinto ng langit, ano yung susi? Yun, talaga, first owner na si Bunay. <laughs> yung tithes po natin, kung tayo po ay ha, tapat na nagbibigay sa, ng ating tithes, siya pala yung ating susi, yung key. Yan. Kailangan umi English tayo dito. <laughs> yung susi. Di ba, habang nagtatithes ka, parang nagbubukas pala ng, ano, ng pintuan ng langit. No? Pag, pag nilalagay mo yung tithes mo, eh, gumaganon yung langit. At pag bumukas yung langit, sino makita natin? Si Lord. At nakikita ka din ni Lord na nagbibigay ng yung tithes and offering. Tapat na naglilingkod sa kanya. Yung glory po ng Lord, ibig sabihin nun, uh, pag titingnan natin sa dictionary yung glory, glory of God, yung pala yung, ano, yung kagandahan, the beauty of God. Yan. Yung kapangyarihan niya, yung uh, lahat ng ano, yung lahat ng uh, makikita natin sa Lord, uh, yun yung glory ng Lord, yung kalulatian niya, at nakatingin sa sayo habang ikaw ay nagbibigay ng tithes and offering, ay yung glory niya ibabagsak daw sa atin. Amen? Ibig sabihin, nalulugod ang Lord sa'yo. Natutuwa yung ang Diyos sa'yo. Amen? Sino gusto matuwa si Lord? Amen. Sa kanya. Kasi pag natuwa si Lord sa'yo, ibang level yon Amen? Lahat ng pangangailangan mo, ipagkakalob niya sa'yo. Lahat ng kailangan mo, ibibigay niya sa'yo kasi gusto niya mag-glorify yung pangalan niya sa buhay mo. Amen. Kaya nga, ano eh, parang Uh, tayo, yung sineshare niya yung glory niya sa atin doon sa mga tapat na naglilingkod sa kanya sa tapat na nagbibigay sa kanya at pag nakita ng mga tao yung glory ng Lord sa buhay mo mabebless din sila kung, mga, kung paano ka binebless ng Lord kasi binuksan mo yung pinto ng langit sa pamamagitan ng yung tapat na pagbibigay ng ating ikapu at kaloob Amen po So ready na po ba tayo mabless? Amen. Makita ni Jesus, mag-glorify ang pangalan ni Jesus 
Yan. Ate po yung taas ang ating uh, ties and offering. Yan. Wag po natin, uh, wag tayo mahihayaan ating taas ang ating mga ties and offering para sa ating Panginoon. Amen. Bakit po ay manalangin. Lord, salamat po sa oras na ito, God, na kami ay binigyan mo ng pagkakataon. Muli, Panginoon, na mag-glorify ka. Uh, pinag- nagpapakumbaba po kami, Panginoon, na natanamang palataya na pag- sa pamamagitan ng aming mga ties, Panginoon, ang iyong iglesia ay uh, patuloy na magagamit mo, Panginoon, mighty and effectively. And Lord, ibuhos mo po, Panginoon, yung uh, ula ng pagpapala sa bawat faithful titers, Panginoon, na magbibigay sa iyo at ang mga mag-offer, Panginoon, ng kanilang kaloob para sa iyong iglesia, para sa iyong uh, kalwalhati, ano, God. Patul mo i-bless ang bawat isa, Panginoon, at ang iyong iglesia na ito. O oh God, salamat po sa iyong dakilang presensya sa oras na ito. Ito po amin dalangin sa pangal ni Jesus. Amen. Maari na po tayo lumapit. Hello. Sige po, offer na po natin ang ating love gift for the Lord. Ayan, isang magandang umaga po ulit sa ating lahat. Good morning! Good morning. Ayan, batiin nyo nga yung katabi nyo. Masaya akong makita ka ngayon. I'm happy to see you today. I <laughs> translate. <laughs> Ayan. Okay po. So, bago po natin introduce yung message, gusto ko lang po i-share sa inyo na kagaya nga po ng uh, shinere ni Pastora April last Sunday, tayo po ay nakikipag-coordinate na. Meron na po tayong nakitang lugar kung saan pwede po tayong lumipat. <laughs> yeah. So, ito po ay nasa palapat, yung place, yung new place po natin. So, pasama na lang po sa prayer kasi marami pong, syempre, maraming changes na mangyayari. So, pag-pray po natin yung church na makapag-adjust tayo, pero hindi na tayo babahain. <laughs> No more flood. <laughs> no more high tide. <laughs> Ayan, tuloy-tuloy na ang ating mga gawain. Amen po. Amen. So, pag-pray natin yan. Naka-aircon doon. Hindi eh. <laughs> na mainit. <laughs> Ayun. Uh, so, yun tayo po. Ngayon na isang special Sunday kasi hindi ako yung magtuturo ngayon. Uh, we have a guest speaker all the way from New Zealand. Ayan. <laughs> So, mga hindi nakakas... Yung iba kasi dito, kilala na si Pastor Warwick, tama? Yung iba, hindi pa. So, sa mga hindi po nakakilala sa kanya, siya po ay part ng Roa family. He's been with us since I'm single. <laughs> Wala pa akong baby. Siya na ang... Isa, sa, isa rin siya sa nagme-mentor po sa akin. Pag may mga questions ako in faith, in spiritual things, sa kanya talaga ako lumalapit. Even in my personal life. Oh, <laughs> he's, he's like a spiritual father to me. So, I'm very blessed that they're here today and it's not uh, an easy journey for them because of his health his age the travel is really hard and also tita divine and english to luyo ko no? ayan tito are ayan uh, and we're blessed kasi pwede naman hindi sila pumunta sa church diba pwede naman mag ano sila they have fun in the philippines swimming you know but they they went here so taga nasa pampanga sila dumayo pa talaga sila dito para mag-share ng message sa atin. So, we are blessed. Amen. Isa nga, thank you muna. Thank you, Pastor Warwick. <laughs> thank you, Pastor Warwick. So, yun po. Let's all welcome the Lord in His life, Pastor Warwick Thorpe. <laughs> ah. We have a new interpreter, by the way. So, the last time... I always interpret for Pastor Warwick, but since we have a lot of English-speaking members now, and he's very good in uh, talking to Australian people, so I think he will understand Kiwi language. <laughs> she will understand Kiwi language. So let's all welcome our interpreter for today's video, <laughs> Sister Catherine Galang. Oh. Hello. <laughs> future future Mrs. Torres. Huh? Yeah. A future I, Mrs. Torres daw. Sabi hindi kayo nag-react. Ayan. Okay. So just uh it's hard to see in the lights. So put your hand up if you're seeing me for the first time. 
Taas daw po ang kamay kung first time niyo po siyang nakita. Oh, many. Many. Okay. Okay. So I, I will teach I will teach you something before we start. May tuturo daw po siya sa atin bago tayo magsimula. When you meet someone, especially the family, Christian family, how will you greet them? Kapag daw may nakita tayo for the first time, especially sa Christian family, paano daw natin sila ginigreet or binabate? So old Roa know this already. So new people, I will teach you. There is a word in Hebrew. The word is shalom. Can you say that? Shalom. Okay. Now, everybody knows that means peace. Right? But actually, it means something more. How do you have peace? Ultimate peace. What is ultimate peace? Ayan. So, marami daw po sa atin na ibig sabihin ng shalom, alam natin ay peace. Pero meron pa daw po pala siyang ibang ibig sabihin. So, ano daw po ba yung ultimate peace na tinatawag natin? So, How? Ultimate peace is to be reconciled to God. Ayan. Ang pinakasukdulan daw po na kapayapaan ay yung, ano ba yung Tagalog ng reconcile? <laughs> is to reconcile. Mapagkasundo tayo ulit sa Diyos. <laughs> Ultimate peace is to be completely changed so that you can live in heaven. Ayan, ang pinakasukdulang kapayapaan daw po ay tayo ay mabago nang sa gayon tayo ay makapunta sa langit. When I say, like, Julie here, if I say, Shalom, Julie, it's a prayer. Ayan. Kapag sinabi daw po niya or binate, kasi binati natin sila na shalom, kapatid, ang ibig sabihin daw nun ay isa yung panalangin. I'm saying to Julie, may you be changed. May you be made perfect. May you live with God forever because that is peace. Kapag sinasabi daw po pala natin, for example, shalom, kapatid, ang ibig sabihin na ay sinasabi natin, ikaw ay mabago, ikaw ay maging perfecto sa Panginoon nang sa gayon makasama mo ng panghabang buhay ang Diyos. So in one word, it's like a whole prayer. Ayan, so sa isang salita, isa siyang buong panalangin na sinasabi natin sa ating kapatid. Shalom. Shalom, Roa. Shalom. shalom. Ah, who who likes Star Trek? Any of you know Star Trek? Star Trek, though. You know the movies, the, the movie. TV, Star Trek. Star Trek. Sinado po na ng Star Trek. Do Do you know Mr. Spock, the Vulcan? Mr. Spock, he's famous, right? He does this when he greets someone. He does this. Do you know that's Christian? With your fingers, this shape, like a W. In Hebrew, that is the letter Shin. And the letter Shin is the first letter of Shalom. So, we go like this, Pastora, Shalom. Shalom. Now you have something special that's only for you. Oh. Your, your secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan. So yun, pwede daw, yung ganito daw pong hand sign as a Christian, first letter daw po siya ng Hebrew na Shalom. So if we do this, parang binabati natin sila, Shalom, kapatid. Ganun. <laughs> yeah. It's a secret weapon daw po. <laughs> okay, the lesson. So I prayed, of course I prayed, And God gave me a really specific message. Ayan, si Pastor daw po ay nanalangin at binigyan siya ng specific na mensahe ng Panginoon para sa atin. It is not an easy message. Hindi daw po madali or hindi magaan ang mensaheng ito. The title is How to Not Fall Away. 
Ang title daw po is How to Not Fall Away. Paano daw okay. po tayo hindi mababagsak or mawawala? So this is to arm you and to strengthen you so that in the days ahead you will not wobble, you will not fall over. Itong mensahe daw po na to ay para palakasin tayo at para i-arm tayo nang sa gayon ay hindi po tayo mawala or bumagsak. I, I have to put my old man glasses on. <laughs> okay, so let's go to Revelation 21. Revelation 21, verse 1 to 8. Pahayag 21, 1 to 8 po. Buksan po natin ang ating mga Bible. Does someone want to read that in Tagalog for us? Sino daw po ang pwedeng magbasa sa Tagalog para sa atin, sa mga una pong nakakita na? Volunteer? Volunteer sa Tagalog po. At nakita ko ang isang bagong langit at isang bagong lupa. So pagkat ang unang langit at ang unang lupa ay naparam at ang dagat ay wala na. Verse 2. At nakita ako, nakita ko ang bayang banal, ang bagong Jerusalem na nananaog mula sa langit buhat sa Diyos na nagnanahahandang gaya ng isang babaeng kasintahan na nagagayahan talaga sa kanyang asawa. At narinig ko ang isang malakas na tinig na mula sa luklukan na nagsasabi, narito ang tab tabernakulo ng Diyos ay nasa mga tao at siya ay mananahan sa kanila at sila ay magiging mga bayan niya at ang Diyos din ay sasa kanila at magiging Diyos nila. At papahirin niya ang bawat luha sa kanilang mga mata at hindi na magkakaroon ng kamatayan, hindi na magkakaroon pa ng dalamhati o ng pananambitan man, o ng hirap pa man. Ang mga bagay ng una ay naparam na. At yaong nakaluklok sa luklukan ay nagsabi, Narito, ginagawa kong bago ang lahat ng mga bagay. At sinabi niya, isulat mo, sapagkat ang mga salitang ito ay tapat at tunay. At sinabi niya sa akin, Nagawa na, ako ang alpa at ang omega, ang pasimula at ang wakas, Ang nauuhaw ay aking paiinuming walang bayad sa bukal ng tubig na buhay. Ang magtagumpay ay magmama, magmamana ng mga bagay na ito at ako'y magiging Diyos niya at siya ay magiging anak ko. Ngunit sa mga duwag at sa mga hindi mananampalataya at sa mga kasuklam-suklam at sa mga mamamatay tao at sa mga makiki, mapakiapid at sa mga mga ngaway, at sa mga mapagsamba sa Diyos Diyosan at sa lahat ng mga sinungaling, ang kanilang bahagi, ang kanilang bahagi ay sa, sa, sa dagat-dagatang nagninigas sa apoy at asupre na siyang ikalawang kamatayan. Okay. Now, it is written, a people who have no vision will perish. Nakasulat daw po ang isang ang isang tao na walang vision ay ma mawawala, magpe-perish. You have to have a vision that will never move, never fail, never be able to be cancelled. Dapat daw po tayong magkaroon ng vision na hindi magfe-fail, hindi nawawala, hindi nawawasak nang sa gayon tayo po ay hindi bumagsak. Your vision should not be here on earth. Ang atin daw pong vision ay hindi dapat na nandito lang sa lupa or nakatuon sa panglupa. If your vision is to be wealthy, kung ang vision natin ay maging mayaman, or famous, or maging sikat, or powerful, or maging makapangyarihan, who knows whether you will get that thing? Sino daw ang makakaalam kung makukuha mo ba talaga yung mga bagay na yun? And even if you get that thing, at kahit na makuha mo yung bagay na yun, at the day of judgment, sa araw ng paghukom, what will your money be worth? Ano daw ang magiging worth ng pera natin? Halaga what, ng pera natin? What will your fame be worth? 
Ano daw yung magiging halaga ng kasikatan natin? What will your power be worth? Anong magiging kahalagahan ng kapangyarihan na mayroon tayo? Zero. Wala. Nothing. Who enters according to the scripture? He says, those who overcome will inherit all these things. Ayan. Nakasulat daw po sa Bible, sino daw po yung makakapasok, sin- yun lang daw po yung mga naka-overcome, yung mga nagtagumpay ang siyang magmamana ng mga bagay na ito. Overcome what? Mapagtagumpayan ng alin. What? Ano daw, ang ma-overcome. What do we have to overcome? Ano ang kailangan natin yung pagtagumpayan? Any... You can translate if it's Tagalog, it's okay. Obedience to God, she says. Yes. <laughs> What you have to overcome is not Satan, it's yourself. Ang kailangan daw po nating pagtagumpayan ay hindi ang kaaway o si Satanas, pero ang sarili natin. What you have to overcome is your old nature where you are just human but not Christian. Ayan, ang kailangan daw po nating pagtagumpayan ay ating ang makalumang nature, makalumang ikaw, hindi lang daw po tayo, hindi bilang isang human, pero bilang isang Christian. When the world becomes dark, when the end is close, your old nature will try and convince you to go back to the old way. Kapag daw po malapit na yung judgment day or madilim na, dark na yung ating mundo, yung atin daw pong lumang pagkatao ay itatry na gagawin ng lahat na i-convince tayo pabalik sa luma nating pagkatao. You will say to yourself, what is the point of trying to obey God? My life is so awful. Ayan. Sasabihin daw po natin sa sarili natin, ano pa yung point na nakakasunod tayo kay Lord pero ang pangit naman ng buhay ko. Sumusunod ka kay Lord pero pangit yung buhay ko. Ganun daw po yung sasabihin sa atin sa the, huling araw. The point is what we just read. The point is that those who overcome inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Your, your vision, your goal is heaven. Understand? This is, who knows the armor of God? Ephesians 6. You all know the armor of God, right? Sino daw po nakakaalam ng armor of God na sinasabi sa Ephesians 6? What goes here? The breastplate of what? Righteousness. Righteousness, right? What is righteousness? It's okay. Most Christians don't know. So it's okay. In Hebrew, tzadek. Okay, you, you don't have to memorize that. Righteousness means everything that is right. Who decides what is right? Only God. So righteousness is everything that God calls good. Ayan. Ang righteousness daw po or ang katuwiran ay lahat ng tama. Sino daw po yung nagsasabi ng tama? Kanina daw po natin malalaman kung ano yung tama kay Lord. At ang sabi pa po niya, ang righteousness daw po ay kung ano yung tinatawag ng Diyos na mabuti. But if I get a breastplate and I just stick it here, take my hand away, what will happen? Ayan, pag daw po naglagay siya ng breastplate lang dito, tapos inalis niya yung kamay nila, ano daw yung mangyayari? It will fall off. What do I need? I need a belt. I need a belt to hold my breastplate on. Ayan. So kapag nilagay niya daw po yung breastplate sa pamamagitan ng kamay niya lang, pag inalis nila yung kamay niya, matatanggal yung breastplate. Kaya daw po kailangan niya ng belt, sinturon, para kumapit sa katawan niya yung breastplate of righteousness. In the armor of God, what is the belt? Sa armor daw ni Lord, ano yung belt? The belt of truth. truth. What is the truth? Ayan. Here. Ayan. This is the belt. Okay? That's why we study. 
if you don't have the truth, you don't have the belt. You don't have the belt. When it gets hard, you, your righteousness will fall off. Yeah. So kapag wala daw po tayong word of God, yung truth, wala tayong belt. At pag wala tayong belt, mahuhulog yung ating breastplate of righteousness kapag ka nahihirapan na tayo. So even it's hard to study, even it's hard to live according to His Word, kahit na daw po mahirap na mag-aral at mamuhay ng ayon sa salita ng Diyos, if you are sick or ran out of money or something, it's hard. Ayan, kapag daw po nagkakaroon tayo ng sakit or wala tayong pera, mahirap po yun. But, If you were on a, a ship that sank, Kung tayo daw po ay nandun sa isang ship, barko na lumubog, but you're in a lifeboat, pero meron kang lifeboat, meron kang lifeboat. <laughs> I, I don't know. Lifeboat, yes. Yeah, nose bleeding. <laughs> I need bio, Jesse. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's all right. So, Think on this. Is it hard to be in the middle of the ocean and your ship sank? You will be so sad. You will be so scared. Right? True? Kapag daw po tayo ay nasa gitna ng karagatan, tapos po nakasakay tayo sa barko, tapos lumubog or nasira yung barko, di ba po malulungkot tayo, matatakot ka? But because you are Afraid, will you jump out of the lifeboat? Dahil daw po ba natatakot ka? Aalis ka daw ba sa lifeboat? Tatalon ka daw ba sa lifeboat mo? Will you just start swimming? Lalangoy ka na lang daw ba? You won't. You will stay in the lifeboat. Hindi. Magstay ka lang sa lifeboat. Tama po ba? Why? Why? Because it's the only rescue for you. There is no other rescue, only the lifeboat. Kasi daw po, yung lifeboat lang, yung tanging rescue na mayroon ka, walang ibang makakapag-rescue sa'yo kundi yung lifeboat lang na yun sa gitna ng karagatan. Lifeboat. So even when it gets very hard in the world, kahit daw po napakahirap na nang nangyari sa mundo, think about that. Isipin daw po natin. When you are tempted to give up, kapag natatempt tayo, natutuksong sumuko, and just see if you can just swim home, at gusto mo na lang lumangoy para makauwi ka, by yourself. <laughs> sa so, pamagitan ng sarili lang natin, you will only drown. Malulunod ka lang. Remember that. However hard, don't get out of the lifeboat. Tandaan daw po natin, gaano man kahirap, huwag tayong umalis sa lifeboat. Because the lifeboat will save everyone in it. Dahil yung lifeboat daw po ay kayang iligtas yung lahat ng tao na nasa loob ng lifeboat. Why? It's because who else is in the lifeboat with you? Okay? So when... Now, we need to talk more about truth. I have a lot of scriptures here, and I only have one hour, so I have to decide which is the most important, right? So I want to give you at least three, maybe four, that you need to really understand so that you will not be shaken when things in the world start to get bad. Eh, meron daw po siya sa ating apat na bagay, apat na truth, katotohanan na isha-share sa atin, ituturo sa atin. Nang sa gayon daw po, kapag ka naging mahirap na ang sitwasyon dito sa ating mundo, hindi daw po tayo masya-shake, hindi tayo, hindi tayo ma, basta-basta lang magagalaw ng kaaway. Today is the 100th day of the war in Israel. Ngayon daw po yung ika-100 day ng digmaan sa Israel. Israel is surrounded by her enemies. Ang Israel daw po ay napapaligiran ng kanyang mga kaaway. Those enemies include Iran, 
Iran in your Bible is Persia. Ayan. Ang isa daw po sa kaaway ng kalaban, enemy ng Israel ay ang Iran na sa Bible ay Persia. Iran is being directed by Russia. Ang Iran daw po ay dinadirect ng Russia to the north. Sa north? To the north of Israel, Russia. Russia. In your Bible, that is the country of Rus. Helping them both is China. Ang tumutulong daw po sa Russia at sa Iran ay China. In your Bible, China is called Sin. S-I-N. That's the ancient name for China. Ang ancient name daw po ng China sa Bible ay Sin. S-I-N. S-I-N. Sin. Everything that is happening in the world tells us that Jesus could easily come in your lifetime. Yung mga nangyayari daw po ngayon sa mundo natin ay sinasabi sa atin na si Jesus ay pwedeng bumalik. Pwedeng bumalik dito in our lifetime. What happens to the Jewish people is like God's calendar. When you see events happening to them that the Bible speaks of, you have to pay attention. And ang Israel daw po ay parang Bible calendar ng ating Panginoon. So kung ano daw po yung mga event, mga pangyayari ng nangyayari sa bayan ng Israel, yun daw po yung kailangan daw po nating mag-pay attention, maging alerto. So, we need truth because it might be, it really might be, that those difficult times that Jesus spoke of could be very soon. Ayan. Kaya kailangan daw po natin ng truth dahil daw po maaring yung time na ito ay si Jesus ay maaari nang pumunta very soon. This, this church is blessed. Ang church na daw po ito ay blessed. Yeah. <laughs> But in my country, most of the churches are very far from God. Pero sa country daw po niya, yung mga churches doon ay malayo sa Panginoon. In my country, if you say I'm a Christian, people will laugh at you. Sa kanya daw pong country, kung saan siya nakatira, kapag sinabi po nilang Christian ka, pagtatawanan ka nila. In Europe, it's even worse. Ayan, mas malala daw po sa Europe. Less than, one, less than four or five people in every hundred go to church. Ayan. Less than four or five people lang daw po ang nag-church sa isang daang tao. It's very, very bad. Very bad daw po. So again, we cannot, we cannot take it lightly. We must be ready or else we might be lost. Ayan. Hindi. Okay? Amen. Let's look at the word. So we're going to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12 and 13. Matthew 24, verse 12 and 13. Matthew 24, 12 daw po. Verse 12. Ah, uh, Let's start earlier. Let's start at verse 10. So we'll go verse 10 until 10 until 14. I'll do two and one. <laughs> so Matthew 24. 10 to 14 daw po. Yeah. Oh, it's okay, Julius. I'm fine. Anyone po na gusto magbasa? Volunteer? Davina, do you have your Bible? Volunteer. <laughs> ah, you can read it. Yeah. Yeah, volunteer. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> pagkatapos, pagkatapos ay kapopootan kayong lahat dahil sa inyong pagsunod sa akin. 
Isasakdal kayo upang pahirapan at patayin. At dahil dito'y marami ang tatalikod sa kanilang pananampalataya. Mapupuot sila at magtataksil sa isa't isa. Marami ang magpapanggap na propeta at ililigaw ang mga tao. Lalaganap ang kasamaan, kaya't manlalamig ang pag-ibig ng marami. Ngunit ang mananatiling tapat hanggang wakas ay siyang maliligtas. Ipapangaral sa buong sanlibutan ang magandang balitang ito tungkol sa kaharian ng Diyos upang magsilbing patutuo sa lahat ng mga bansa at sa kadarating ang wakas. This is Jesus talking. Si Jesus daw po yung nagsasalita dito. So those things must happen. There is no question. All of that must happen before he comes. Ayan. Wala daw pong katanungan dahil si Jesus ang nagsasalita. Lahat daw pong nang binasa natin ay mangyayari. It says that because of the increase in the original word means lawlessness. Dahil daw po sa pag-increase or paglaki ng lawlessness sa English or Yeah. It says the love of most Ayan, will go cold. Ayan, ang pag-ibig daw po ng marami ay manlalamig. How many is most? Gano daw po ba kadami yung madami? Are you ready to be shocked? Handa na daw po ba kayong magulat? Biblical standard means probably two-thirds of the worldwide church will abandon Jesus. Two-thirds. Ayan. Two-thirds daw po ng worldwide church ang mag pwedeng mag-abandon or mang iwan kay Jesus. Ganon daw po kadami. But see, he says again, the one who endures, the one who overcomes, the one who stands and refuses to leave the lifeboat, they will be saved. Ayan. Pero daw po, kahit na madami pa rin, ang man, maaring manlamig, yung kung sino daw po yung magtatagumpay or mag-e-endure, mananatili hanggang wakas na nandoon sa lifeboat, ay maliligtas. And you see at the end, Even that's happening, it says the gospel will be preached to the whole world. At kahit na daw po nangyayari yung mga bagay na yun, sinabi po sa dulo ng verse, ang gospel, ang mabuting balita daw po, ay ipipreach pa rin sa buong mundo. So when most are falling away, what will you be doing? Ayan. Kung ang nakararami daw po ay nawawala na, ano ang dapat na ginagawa mo? Someone still has to preach the gospel. Dapat daw po mayroon pa rin na naghahayag ng salita ng Diyos ng mabuting balita. That's raw, right? <laughs> Ang raw daw po yun, di ba? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. But the lesson is, it's going to happen. And Ang lesson daw po ay mangyayari ang lahat ng ito. Jesus said about this, He said, I am telling you now so that when it happens, you will not be shaken. Ayan, sabi po ni Jesus, kaya niya daw po sinasabi ito ngayon, nang kapag sa gayon ito ay nangyari na, hindi ka daw po masyashaken. Instead of thinking that God has vanished or gone on a holiday, you will say, oh, this is what Jesus said will happen This proves Jesus right, so I will all the more stay faithful. Amen. Ayan. So, yeah. kung daw po iniisip natin minsan na si Lord ay nawala na lang or nagpunta na lang ng holiday, kasi nangyayari na nga po yung mga pangit na bagay sa mundo, ayan, ang sabi po doon, ah, hindi, ka, hindi ako magugulat kasi ito pala yung sinasabi ng Diyos na mangyayari. And all the more, mas kailangan po natin na magstay doon sa lifeboat. At mas maging faithful kay Lord. Yeah, that's right. And the truth never changes. 
at hindi daw po nagbabago ang katotohanan. So when you add these things to your belt, your righteousness is more secure. It won't fall off when it gets hard. Ayan. So kapag daw po lahat ng yon ay nilagay natin as our belt, yung righteousness natin ay hindi malalaglag. More truth, more armor. Ayan. Mas maraming katotohanan, more armor daw po. Okay. You're doing well. Now, the next one is a little bit difficult for many people, but we're going to have a go. Here we go. Second Thessalonians 2. So 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 to 4. Second Thessalonians 2 po. Yep. 3 to 4. Volunteer po. Si Atinova, I volunteer Atinova. Second Thessalonians. I, got, I, I can do it like this, sister. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> okay, na volunteer na po si Armin. <laughs> Second Thessalonians. Ah, uh, ano po English po yung verse ng Bible ko. Meron. Second Te Thessalonians two, two to four. Ayan na po. Two to four. Three, three pala. Three to four. At three to four. Huwag kayong magpapadaya kanino man sa anumang paraan. Hindi darating ang araw ng Panginoon hanggat di pa nagaganap ang huling paghihimagsik laban sa Dios at ang paglitaw ng suwail na itinakda sa kapahamakan. Itataas niya ang kanyang sarili at kakalabanin ang lahat ng kinikilalang Diyos at sinasamba ng mga tao. Uupo siya sa templo ng Diyos at magpapakilalang siya ang Diyos. Okay na po. Do you see it's the same message? Nakikita niyo daw ba na kamukha lang yun ng kanina? The same. Paul is telling them, before Jesus comes, even before Antichrist comes, most of the church will fall away. And sinasabi daw po ni Paul yun na kahit na bago pa dumating si, si Jesus, kahit bago pa mang, dumating ang Antichrist, marami daw pong Christian ang magpa-fall away, ang mawawala. The word, uh, you don't have to memorize this, okay? But the word there, it's Greek, it's apostasia. And you might know the English word apostasy. And it means to rebel. So they don't just leave God, they rebel against Him. They actively, with their mind, choose to no longer follow His instruction. And they choose to go back to the world. Ayan. So, in, uh, sa Greek word, ayan, English word na lang daw po nun ay apostasy, kung alam natin. And yung apostasy daw po is to rebel, mag-rebelde mag against kay Lord. At yung isip daw po nila, nung mga, kung yung nabasa natin sa verse, yung isip daw po nila ay mas pinipili na huwag nang sumunod sa Diyos at bumalik sa dati nilang pagkatao. Okay. I can't pick on Julie because she's filming. Can I volunteer you? Verse 9. Volunteer ka daw. Verse 9. So still 2 Thessalonians 2, but just verse 9. Okay, she said she has poor eyesight, ah. so she volunteered her sister. <laughs> That's good. That's my method. Paglitaw ng suwail, taglay niya ang kapangyarihan ni Satanas. Gagawa siya ng lahat ng uri ng mapanlinlang na mga himala at kababalaghan. So, wait, we'll pause there. In the church worldwide, Satan has been very, very busy. Ayan, sa mga churches daw po worldwide, sobrang busy po ni Satanas. False teachers and false prophets have caused many, instead of seeking God, they seeking miracles. Ayan. Marami daw po mga false teachers and false prophets ngayon na dinutulak yung mga Christian na instead na isik si Lord, hanapin si Lord, ang masinahana po ay mga miracles. 
instead of seeking heaven, you know our vision, our goal, they're seeking power here. Instead daw po na hanapin yung vision natin, which is yung heaven, yung goal natin na heaven, ang sinisik daw po nila ay power, kapangyarihan dito sa lupa. Just like John the Baptist, kagaya daw po ni John the Baptist, prepared the way for Jesus, na inihanda ang daan para kay Jesus, there is a false prophet, meron din daw po mga false prophet, who prepares the way for Antichrist. Na naghahanda ng daan para naman sa mga Antikristo. What you just read describes what he will do. He will do real signs and wonders, very powerful signs and wonders, even raising the dead. Ayan. So yung binasa daw po natin na verse, kaya daw pong gumawa ng Antichrist ng signs and wonders. Very powerful, makapangyarihan ng signs and wonders, kaya na rin bumuhay ng patay. But just like the false churches now, Pero kagaya daw po ng mga false na churches ngayon, He will not be teaching the gospel. Hindi daw po niya ituturo ang mabuting balita or yung gospel. He will be teaching the character of Satan. Ang ituturo niya daw po ay ang character ni Satanas. Greed. Greed. Ano ba yung Sakim. Kasakiman. Pride. Pride. Kayabangan. Pagmamataas. And lawlessness. And lawlessness daw po. Meaning, anything goes. As if there is, as if God never made a law. Ayan. Pag lawlessness daw po, Lahat daw po ng gusto nilang gawin as if na hindi gumawa ng batas ang Diyos. What does this mean for us? We must never, ever, ever make miracles and power and money and a huge church or anything like that. Never let that be your goal. Because that is exactly what Satan wants you to do. So ano daw po yung dapat natin gawin? Wag na wag na wag daw po natin maging goal, yung miracle talaga, yung power dito, or sobrang magpadami ng church. Kasi po yun daw po yung gusto ni Satanas na gawin natin. Will God still do real miracles? Yes. Ga- Gagawa pa din daw po ba ng totoong miracle si Lord? Oo naman. Have you seen a real miracle? Put your hand up if you've seen a real miracle. Nakita na daw po kayo ng totoong miracle. Taas niyo daw po kamay niyo. Yeah, if you have seen... Right? Me, many. Many. But who does the Holy Spirit work through? Who will He work through? Ayan. Kanina daw po mag-work ang Holy Spirit. Mag-work through. We sang before, you are holy, right? He is the Holy Spirit. His name in Hebrew is Ruach HaKodesh. Ruach means spirit or wind. Ha, the Kodesh, holy. What does holy mean? It means set apart, separated from the world. Ayan. So, kanina daw po mag-work yung Holy Spirit. Siyempre dahil daw po siya ay holy, Ayan. Ang meaning daw po ng holy ay, sa Greek word ay kodesh, na meaning ay set apart. So, if you are greedy, proud, lawless, you are not set apart from the world. You, you are the same as the world. <laughs> Ayan. Kapag daw po tayo ay uh, ma-pride, um, greedy, at saka lawless, walang sinusunod, Hindi daw, po tayo, hindi, hindi daw po tayo set apart. Kamukha lang daw po tayo ng mundo. God will provide. You don't need His power to be looked after. You need Him. Ayan. Sabi po, si Lord daw po ay kayang mag-provide. Hindi mo daw po kailangan na hanapin yung power ni Lord, pero ang kailangan mong hanapin ay si Lord mismo. When he needs to show his power, he does. Kung kailangan niyang ipakita yung kapangyarihan niya, gagawin niya. But he decides. 
Pero siya pa rin po ang nagde-decide. He decides when. Siya pa rin yung magsasabi kung kailan niya i-show yung power niya. There was a girl 20 years old. Meron daw pong isang babae 20 years old. And before I was married, bago, bago pa daw po siya ikasal, I used to just rent an apartment with two friends. Ayan, nagre-rent daw po siya ng apartment with his two friends. My two friends found her at the beach. Ayan, nakita daw po nila yung 20-year-old girl na yun sa beach. She, she is the size of Julie. Kasing laki lang daw po ni Julie. Her boyfriend is like me but six foot two. Ayan, may boyfriend daw po yun. Kagaya niya pero mas matangkad. 6.2. When they found her, nung nakita niya daw po, she is throwing him down the beach as if he is made of a piece of paper. Ayan, nung nakita niya daw po yun sila, yung boyfriend niya na mas malaki kay Brother Warwick, six-footer, ay tinotrow, tinat, parang hinahagis lang po nung babae na yun na kasing laki ni Julie sa beach, na parang papel. She has strength like Superman. Ayan, may, may, may lakas daw po yung babae na yun na kagaya na si Superman. And out of her mouth, Ayan. five different male voices. Ayan. At lumabas daw po sa bibig niya yung five na magkakaibang boses ng lalaki. Her boyfriend is not Christian. Ayan. Yung boyfriend daw po niya ay hindi Christian, ng babae. So he's trying to use his strength to control her. Ayan. So tinatry daw po nung boyfriend, nung babae na i-control siya. You cannot fight a demon with your muscles. Ayan. Hindi mo daw po pwedeng labanan yung mga demonyo sa pamagitan ng muscle mo lang. If you have a pistol, you cannot shoot it. Ayan, kapag may baril ka daw po, hindi mo rin pwedeng barilin. There's five. Meron daw pong lima. <laughs> my friends start to pray. So long as they prayed, she became quiet. Yung mga kaibigan niya daw po ay nagsimulang mag-pray. And when they start, nung nagsimula daw po silang manalangin, naging quiet daw po, tumahimik yung babae. Our pastor's house was straight across the road from the beach. So they took her there. Ayan, yung pastor's house daw po nila was across the beach lang daw po. So dinala daw po nila yung babae doon. The whole church came praying. Ayan, yung buong church daw po ay pumunta para ipagpray yung babae. She's a, a stranger. No one knows who she is. Ayan, Australian daw po yun. No one knows. Yeah. A stranger. 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 No one knows. Ayan, wala daw pong nakakaalam kung sino yun. But Jesus commands us to love even our enemies. Ayan. Pero, pero si Jesus daw po ay nagpapakita ng kanyang pagmamahal kahit sa ating mga kaaway. So they're praying for the stranger. And they called me. And I drove there. They did not tell me what was happening. And tinawag daw po nilas siya, si Pastor Warwick. At di daw po naman sinabi sa kanila kung ano yung nangyayari. As soon as I got to the house, Ayan, nung na nakapunta daw po siya dun sa pastor's house, the peace of God came upon me. Ay, ang kapayapaan daw po ni Lord ay sumakan niya. Perfect peace. Perfect peace. And I said, oh Lord, I, are you about to do something? So And he said, yes. I didn't do anything. Divine appointment. God's time. He chose the time. He chose the place to help that girl. Me, I'm just the messenger. Amen. You know, that's all. Amen. Ayan, sabi po, sabi po niya, pumunta siya doon and yung peace nga ni Lord ay sumakan niya. Wala daw po siyang ginawa. Tapos nung papasok siya, sabi niya, Lord, Meron ka bang gagawin ngayon? Ang sabi ni Lord, oo. At wala daw pong ginawa si Pastor Wari. Pero at the time, natulungan niya po yung si Lord ang kumilo sa pamagitan ni Pastor para matulungan yung babae na yun. So I went inside. I still don't know what's going on. And I see the whole church is in the house all praying like this. I'm thinking, oh wow, what's going on? I went to the kitchen of the house. And my pastor is there and he looks as if he's about to die. He's so afraid, right? 
but I have peace. Because I know it's God's time. He's in control. I don't have to do anything. I'm just the message boy. I bring the me- take the message from him, deliver it. But I don't have any power. I'm not special. I'm just me. Mm. It's little me. <laughs> right? I saw her. Oh, it's the receptionist from my office. Ayan. So yun nga daw po, uh, nagpunta siya sa kitchen, nakita niya yung pastor niya, parang malapit na daw mamatay. <laughs> Ayan. Pero si Pastor Warik po at that time ay meron siyang peace. Kasi po, hindi naman, wala naman daw po siyang gagawin. Siya lang daw po ay messenger ni Lord. Kung sa time ni Lord, gagawin niya yung miracle. It's his time ni Lord. Siya yung magde-decide. At tayo lang daw po yung messenger ng Panginoon. So pagpasok niya daw po, nakita niya yung babae, receptionist daw po yun sa office nila. <laughs> And three weeks before, Ayan, three weeks daw, bago yun, mangyari, at work, sa kanilang trabaho, she came in my office, pumunta daw po yung babae na yun sa office nila, and she said, can I ask a question? Pwede daw bang magtanong, sabi sa kanya. I work in a finance company, right? Ayan, nag-work daw po siya sa isang finance company. So I think the question will be about money. Ayan, so ang akala niya daw po ang itatanong sa kanya ay tungkol sa pera. And she looked and she said, Is it possible to have a real life without God? Tinanong daw po ng babae, posible ba na magkaroon ng totoong buhay nang wala ang Diyos? So I could do a sermon for five hours about that. Kaya niya daw po magbigay ng limang oras na sermon na message about doon. But God told me what to say. Pero sinabi ng Lord sa kanya kung ano yung dapat niyang sabihin. Guess what my whole message was? My whole message was, no. She said, is it possible to have life without God? And the whole answer was, No. no. So ano daw po yung sagot sa tanong na yun na posible daw bang mabuhay nang wala ang Diyos? No. Why? Because that's the truth. That's the whole message. That's the whole sermon. Mm. The answer is no. Ayan. Without Jesus, there is no life. Amen. And she said, thank you very much, and she left. <laughs> and then after three weeks, she said nothing else. So I thought, oh, well, that's that. And then suddenly, there she is in the kitchen. Hmm. You want to... Ayan. So, yun nga po, tinanong, tinanong siya. At ang sagot niya lang ay no, kasi yun yung message. Bakit? Yun yung totoo, na hindi tayo pwede mabuhay na wala ang Diyos. Bakit? Dahil si Jesus ang buhay. So, and then three weeks after that, umalis, eh, umalis lang daw po yung babae. Then three weeks after that, nandun sa kitchen yung babae na yun. <coughs> and I saw her lips open as if she will speak. Ayan, at nakita niya daw po yung lips ng babae na yon na parang may gustong sabihin sa kanya. But in my spirit, I knew it would not be her speaking, but something else speaking through her. Ayan, and alam niya daw po sa kanyang spirito na hindi yung babae na yon yung nagsasalita, pero uh, something in her. Never, ever have a conversation with a demon. Ayan, wag daw po tayo makikipag-usap. Wag na wag daw po tayo makikipag-usap sa mga demonyo. You cannot negotiate. Hindi daw po kasi tayo makik- pwedeng makipag-negosasyon. They only know how to lie. Ang alam lang daw po ng kaaway ay magsinungaling. So whatever they tell you will be a lie. Ayan, ano, kung ano man daw po ang sabihin sa atin, yun daw po ay kasinungalingan. So I didn't want to hear what it was going to say. So, ayaw niya daw pong marinig kung ano yung gustong sabihin sa kanya. On the television, those boys in the shiny suits, Benny Hinn and those kind of guys, you know, they will jump up and down and shouting and waving their hands at Satan and going, get out, all that stuff, right? A big performance. Ayan. So, sa, sa TV daw po nakikita natin yung mga... Lalaki in shiny suits daw po. Lahat daw po sila, uh, sila daw po ay nag-shout, 
get out, ayan, sinasabihan na a whole performance daw po yung pinapakita nila. All that is is pride. All that is is them wanting the people to think that they are powerful. That is never the Holy Spirit. Ayan. Never. So ang gusto lang daw po kasi nila is yung attention ng mga tao ay mapunta sa kanila at hindi daw po yun ang work ng Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works through the faithful and the humble. Ayan. Ang Holy Spirit daw po ay kumikilos sa pamagitan ng mga tapat, faithful, at sa mga humble. So when the demon wanted to speak, what did I do? I'll show you. Like this. Remember this? I put my hand here like this. And I whispered really quietly. So quietly. Even my pastor next door, standing here, did not hear what I said. And I just said, be still. That's it. I just said, be still. So quiet. But the demon heard it. All five heard it. And she crashed to the ground as if she was dead. Boom. Ayan. So nung about to speak na daw po yung demon doon sa loob ng babae, wala daw po siyang ginawa. Yung sign na daw po na to na tinuro sa atin, which is shalom. Ang sinabi lang daw po niya in a very quiet, mahinang mahina, kahit daw po yung katabi niya hindi narinig. Ang sinabi lang daw po ni Pastor Warwick ay be still. And after po nun, biglang bumagsak yung babae na yon sa na parang patay na dun sa floor because when it's real god does not need to shout kapag daw po kasi totoo hindi daw naman po kailangan talagang sumigaw ng lord the power of god is total ayan ang power ni lord ay buo so i picked her up carried her to a, her, a small room office Because why you don't want to embarrass her. Mm. The church, I said, just start, keep praying there. And I took her out of sight, and we had Sunday school lesson. Like you would have with a five-year-old. Mm. The basic, basic, basic Sunday school lesson. Mm. Ayan, so binuhat niya daw po yung babae na yan, dinala niya sa isang maliit na room. At uh, nag-usap po sila doon, Basic lang daw po yung mga pinag-usapan nila. Parang pang five years old <laughs> lang daw po. And when I knew she had understood enough to make a decision, I said to her, I cannot decide for you. It has to be your free will choice. Do you want this life that you have or do you want eternal life, do you want God to save you? So, tinanong niya po yung babae, sabi niya, hindi ko kayang mag-decide para sa sarili mo. Ikaw ang mag-decide niyan on your own free will. So, ang gusto mo ba ay magkaroon ng buhay? Magpatuloy sa buhay mo na yan o ang eternal na buhay kasama ang Panginoon? As soon as she said yes, God, confirm to me in my spirit, that she really meant it. He was happy to accept her repentance. Ayan. At nung pagkasabi daw pong yes ng babae, na naramdaman niya sa spirit ni Pastor Warwick na kinonfirm ng Lord na yung babae na yun ay inaccept ni Lord dahil sa repentance niya. And then the Holy Spirit just spoke through me and He just said, leave. That's it, one word. Leave. And all five demons flew from the house. Ayun, and yung Holy Spirit daw po ay nag-spoke kay Pastor Warwick, isang word lang, leave, umalis ka. And after po niyang sinabi yun, leave, yung limang demons na daw po yun na nasa babae ay umalis. Everyone in the house felt them go. Yung lahat daw po nung nandun sa pastor's house na yun ay naramdaman na umalis talaga yung five demons na yun. These days, she's a missionary. Uh, at ngayon po, yung babae na yon ay isa ng missionary. Yeah. When it's real, it's so very real. But what is going to happen is all these false, false teachers, false prophets, but they will show off their power. They will try and impress you with their power. 
That's pride. That's never, ever going to be the Holy Spirit. So don't worry. If you are faithful, if you are humble, if God needs you to be the one to send five demons running, he will stand in you and he will do it through you. Amen. Ayan. So, kapag daw po ito ay galing sa Diyos, totoo talaga. Alam natin na totoo. Pero po kasi yung mga false teachers, mga false prophets, gusto nila na nagpapakitang gila sila, show off nila yung power na mayroon sila. Pero hindi daw po ganun kumilos ang Panginoon. Ang Diyos ay kumikilos sa mga humble at sa mga faithful na tao. I have so many stories like that. Many, many. Right? God showed me He's real. He really is real. When he needs to do something, he can use anybody. Ayan. Pinakita daw po sa kanya ng Panginoon maraming beses na ang Diyos ay totoo. At kapag kailangan niyang may gawin, ang, may kailangan gawin ng Diyos, kaya niyang gumamit ng kahit na sinong tao. So don't chase the miracles. Kaya wag daw po natin habulin ang mga miracles. Chase the one who sends the miracles. Ang habulin natin ay kung sino yung gumagawa ng miracle. Because he warned us, that this deception is coming. Ayan, dahil daw po, we narn tayo ng Panginoon na ang deception na ito ay, ang pandilin lang na ito ay dadating. Now, this is the bit that's hard. How can I put it? I'm trying to pick the most important because we only have like 20 or 30 minutes maybe left. Can we read? Did we read verse 9? We did, didn't we? Did yes, we, we did. So verse 9 and 10, we won't spend time reading again. So if you're taking notes, verse 9 and 10, still set to Thessalonians. This is the bit that people find hard to understand, but you must understand it. God sees everything. Nothing is hidden from him including the future. Ayan. Ang Diyos daw po ay nakikita ang lahat ng bagay at wala tayong pwedeng itago sa Kanya at nakikita rin ng Lord ang hinaharap. Just like that girl, you have to use your free will kagaya daw po nung babae na yun, kailangan natin gamitin yung free will natin to choose Him para piliin ang Panginoon and to keep choosing Him at para patuloy na piliin ang Panginoon. Those people that will rebel, sa mga tao daw po na magre-rebelde, they're using their free will to rebel. Ginagamit din daw po nila yung kanilang free will para magrebelde sa Panginoon. But God already knows who will stay and who will leave. Pero alam na daw po ng Diyos kung sino ang mananatili at kung sino yung aalis. When Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus, nung si Judas daw po ay ipinagkalunlo si Jesus, it says that Jesus was not surprised because he knew from the beginning that Judas would do that. Ayan. So, nung binetray po siya, pinagkalunlo siya ni Judas, hindi na daw po na surprise si Jesus kasi alam ni Jesus na mula pa nung umpisa, ibibetray siya ni Judas. What will God do to those who are like Judas? Ano daw po yung gagawin ng Panginoon sa mga kagaya ni Judas? Verse 9 and 10 tell you. This is the bit you have to understand what I say next. So important. When you read verse 9 and 10, it's about the coming of Antichrist. Antichrist means a substitute Jesus. He will pretend to be Jesus. Ayan. So, importante daw po na malaman natin to verse 9 and 10, na ito daw po ay tungkol sa Antichrist. At ang ibig sabihin daw po ng Antichrist ay substitute ni Jesus or sila yung mga nagpe-pretend na si Jesus. The scripture says that those who perish do so, they perish because, listen carefully, they refused to love the truth. Ayan. Sa mga tao daw po na nagpe-perish, 
Ayan, kaya sila nagpe-perish or nawawala. Can we put verse 9 and 10 up there while I'm talking? It's not because they didn't pray enough, not because they didn't evangelize enough, not because their church was too small, something like that, just one reason. They perish because they refused. That's their free will, their choice. They refused to love the truth. They took their belt off. Ayan. So yun nga daw po, uh, marami daw po sa atin yung nawawala. And hindi daw po porke na hindi ka na nag-evangelize, mawawala ka. Hindi daw po yun ganun. Nag-evangelize ka, may ginagawa ka, nagpe-pray ka. Pero yung mga taong nawawala daw po ay yung mga nagre-refuse or tumatanggi na mahalin yung katotohanan. Then it says the scary thing. This is the scary bit. Because we have to remember, God is no joke. Ayan. Ito daw po ay isang seryosong bagay at nakakatakot na bagay dahil hindi daw po nagbibiro ang Diyos. It says that because they refuse to love the truth, He, God, sends on them a powerful delusion. A delusion is like um, a lie. And He causes them to believe it. Our God sends on those wicked this delusion like a mental illness and he causes them to believe it they cannot escape it is a judgment ayan and sa mga ayaw daw pong mahalin or nagre-refuse na mahalin ang katotohanan he si lord daw po mismo yung nagse-send ng delusion sa mga tao na yon na parang mental illness na mismo si lord yung nagsasabi na ito yung paniwalaan nila What does it cause? It causes them to accept Antichrist. So ano daw po yung nagiging resulta ng mga bagay na yun? Nagiging, ang nangyayari po ay tinatanggap nila yung mga Antichrist. Antichrist is sent by God. Ang Antichrist daw po ay ipinadala ng Diyos. As a judgment. Bilang isang paghuhukom. Those who refuse to love the truth, God himself hands them over to Antichrist. Sa mga nagre-reject or nagre-refuse daw po na mahali ng katotohanan, pinapadala and, sila mismo ng Diyos sa Antikristo. And they will be sealed. And also, I don't know how to explain sealed. Uh, they will be, Do you have the seal of the Holy Spirit in your heart? Yes? You know what that means? Seal. Tatak daw po ng Holy Spirit. Like mark. A, a mark. Like yeah. a guarantee. Right? Guarantee. So yes. if you're a Christian, you have the seal, the mark of the Holy Spirit in your heart. Okay? The exact same thing but the satanic version is the mark of the beast. Christians are marked, sealed for Christ. These people are marked, sealed for for the Antichrist. The mark of the beast is just God placing a seal, a judgment that says this person forever belongs to Satan. Mm. Once that happens, they cannot be saved. Once that happens, it's too late. Ayan. So, kung paano daw po tayong merong mark kapag tayo ay naliligtas, which is mark of the Holy Spirit, guarantee, kumbaga parang mark na tayo ay sa Diyos, meron din daw po yung Antikristo. Pero ang naglalagay nun mismo ay ang Diyos na minamarkahan nila na itong mga tao na to ay forever na, na kay Satanas at hindi na sila maliligtas. Why do you need to know that? You have to understand it's our God doing it. Kailangan daw po nating maintindihan na mismo ang Diyos natin ang gumagawa nun. He is sovereign, all-powerful. He is the perfect judge. Because he foreknows, he already knows their choice, he never makes a mistake. Anyone he can save, he will save. But those he knows that he cannot save, like Judas, for sure, he will hand them over and they will perish. 
Ayun, kailangan daw po nating maintindihan nga po na si Lord mismo yung gumagawa nun. Paano niya daw po nagagawa yun? Kasi nakikita niya yung lahat. He is sovereign. He is powerful, makapangyarihan. And nakikita niya rin po yung mga choices ng mga tao na yun. So everyone na kaya niya pang iligtas, nililigtas niya. Pero yung mga hindi na po talaga, kagaya daw po ni Judas, minamarkahan mismo ng Lord na para na sa Antichrist. Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23. Uh, I think we... Uh, yeah, it's only short. Can we quickly read that? Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Matthew 7, 21 to 23. You want to just read that, Catherine? Yeah, I'll just read it. Hindi lahat ng tumatawag sa akin, Panginoon, Panginoon, ay papasok sa kaharian ng langit, kundi ang mga taong sumusunod sa kalooban ng aking ama na nasa langit. Sa araw ng paghuko, marami ang magsasabi sa akin, Panginoon, hindi po ba't sa iyong pangalan ay nangaral kami, nagpalayas ng mga demonyo at gumawa ng mga himala. Ngunit sasabihin ko sa kanila, hindi ko kayo kilala. Lumayo kayo sa akin, kayong mga gumagawa ng kasamaan. Can you imagine coming to the judgment, thinking that you're going to be accepted, and Jesus says, go away. I don't know you. Ayan. Na-imagine daw po ba natin na pag dumating na yung judgment day, tapos akala natin matatanggap tayo, mapupunta tayo kay Lord, pero ang sasabihin ng Diyos sa atin, umalis ka, hindi kita kilala. Who are they? Sino sila? They are the people that instead of seeking Jesus himself, they wanted power. They wanted here. They followed Antichrist. They, they followed a different Jesus. Sino daw po yung mga tao na yun? Yun daw po yung mga tao na ang sinisik ay hindi si Jesus, pero yung power lang po, yung mga bagay dito sa mundo, at yung mga tao na sumunod sa Antikristo. Not us, right? We want heaven. We want the real Jesus. Ayan, at hindi daw po tayo doon. Amen po ba? We want Jesus at nais daw po natin yung totoong langit. Amen po ba? And we, and we don't want our neighbor, our friend, or even our enemy to hear that. We don't want to hear, we, we don't want anyone we love to hear that terrible thing. Go away from me. Ayan. At syempre po, ayaw daw po natin na maranasan or marinig mismo ng mga kakilala natin, mga mahal natin sa buhay, kamag-anak natin, na sasabihin sa kanila ng Panginoon din na, um, umalis kayo, di ko kayo kilala. So if they are being led away from the truth by those false teachers, who can save them? Ayan. At kung sila daw po ay naliled away na or naliligaw na ng mga false teachers, sino daw po yung makakapagligtas sa kanila? It's you. <coughs> Ikaw daw po yun. <coughs> if you have the truth, kung nasa iyo ang katotohanan, the answer to a lie is the truth. Ang sagot daw po sa kasinungalingan ay katotohanan. Jesus himself is the truth. Si Jesus mismo ang katotohanan. He is the word of God. Siya ang salita ng Diyos. That's your weapon. Yan daw po yung weapon natin. When you bring the real word of God, what it actually says, you're bringing Jesus. Ayan. Kapag daw po dinadala natin ang salita ng Diyos, yun daw po mismo si Jesus. You can rescue them with the truth. Kaya daw po natin silang iligtas sa pamagitan ng katotohanan. Now, what should we finish with? Because I think our time is almost up. If you're taking notes, write down Revelation 12, Isaiah 66, and Isaiah 26. Ayan, pag nagtitake down the notes po kayo, pwede niyo pong isulat yung Revelation 12, Isaiah 66, and, and Isaiah 26. And Isaiah 26 daw po. Okay, so 
How many mothers in the room? Mga nanay. Leaders? Ano? Mothers. 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 Mommy. Right. <laughs> Taas daw po kamay, mga nanay. Ah, so let's ask the mothers, when you're having your baby and you are having labor pains, can you explain? Ayan, nung kayo daw po ay nagbubuntis at malapit na mga anak at nararamdaman niyo po yung paglalabor. Was it fun? Masaya daw po ba? Nung naglalabor daw po kayo, masaya daw po ba? But, but, very painful, right? And did you think, oh, that's it, that's it, forget it. Far no way, I'm not having any more pain. Ayan, pero naisip niyo daw po ba na, ayoko na, tama na, okay na, yun na lang. Right? Naisip niyo po ba daw yun? Let me out of this lifeboat, I'm just going to swim for myself. You don't do that. Why? Because you have a vision. And your vision, you're holding in your arms. You understand? Ayan. Oh, kagaya daw po yun ang pagbubuntis. No? Hindi naman pwede na porke na hihirapan ka. Hahayaan mo na lang hanggang ayaw mo na. Pero po kasi meron daw po tayong vision. May nakikita ka na after ng paghihirap na yun, lalabas yung baby mo. Ganun God, din daw po yun. Sorry. God... Everywhere in the Bible, God talks about the coming of his kingdom. So that's the second coming, Jesus coming, and the kingdom of God coming to replace this. He talks about it as a pregnancy. And he talks about labor pains. Ayan. So yung kagaya daw po nung pinag-uusapan natin na second coming, yung kingdom ni Lord ay pinag-uusapan daw, ay tinotalk, dinidiscuss sa Bible na kagaya ng pagbubuntis. So, yun po. So, all, the, all your mothers will remember something. And those who are not yet mothers, you will find out. <laughs> Ayan, yung mga nanay daw po, alam nyo naman na yun, yung mga mothers na, pero yung mga hindi pa, malalaman nyo din daw po. In the beginning... In the beginning, when it starts, there is a bit of pain, and then it's okay. And then after a while, there's a bit of pain, and then another break. But the closer the baby is coming, the intensity of the pain goes up, and the pain happens closer together. Until at the end, it's almost continuous. Ayan, yung sa pagbubuntis nga daw po, habang naglilabor, yung una daw po, konting sakit lang, tas magiging okay ka, tas mamaya konting sasakit daw po, tas okay ka. Pero as soon as malapit na daw po talagang lumabas yung baby, mas masakit po siya, tumataas daw po yung pain, at mas lalong masakit at wala nang pahinga, puro masakit na lang. That is the end times. That is the tribulation. At yun daw po yung end times, yung tribulation na tinatawag natin. It begins with a small trouble once in a while. Ay, nagsisimula daw po siya sa mga maliliit lang po. Then the trouble becomes worse. Ayan, and yung mga trouble daw po na yun ay mas nagiging malala. And then more often. At mas dumadalas. And so, it's almost continuous. Uh, hanggang sa maging tuloy-tuloy na po yun na nararanasan natin. How will you survive? Paano ka daw po makaka-survive? Exactly the same as all these mothers. You don't think of the pain. You think of what the pain is bringing. So paano nga daw po tayo makaka-survive kagaya daw po ng mga nanay? Hindi daw po nila iniisip yung sakit, pero ang iniisip nila, ano yung maidudulot? Ano yung maibibring out ng sakit na ito? Remember our vision, Revelation 21? When the kingdom, no more death, no more pain, no more poor, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more anything bad, only joy, eternal life. That's the baby. Ayan. So yun daw po yung vision natin, kagaya ng baby, yung binasa natin sa Revelation 21. Wala nang sakit, walang karamdaman, puro masaya na lang. Lahat daw po yun, yun yung parang baby na tinitingnan natin as our vision. So, guys, the women have an advantage. 
Mga lalaki daw po, may mas advantage daw po yung mga babae. <laughs> you, and, you and I, we just have to imagine. Imagine having a baby. Oh. <laughs> imagine nyo na lang daw po, na parang may baby kayo. <laughs> Kung nagbubuntis ang mga lalaki. <laughs> too hard. Like, love your wife. Look after her. Okay. Ayan, mahalin nyo daw po mga asawa nyo. <laughs> okay. This is what God wants you to understand. It's Him. He has to do these things to save as many as He can. You will ask me, and I'll probably try and finish with this. You will ask me, why do we have to suffer? Ayan, kailangan daw po natin maintindihan na ginagawa to ng Diyos nang sa gayon ay mas marami pang maligtas. Pero minsan po tinatanong natin, Lord, bakit ba kailangan namin mag-suffer? Two things. If you go to Revelation 3, just, we're not going to go there, just if you're taking notes, you want to study after. Revelation 3, about the church in Laodicea. It's the last, there are seven letters to the churches, it's the last church, Laodicea. That is the description of the modern church. The modern church is what Laodicea is talking about. Ayan, pag pumunta daw po tayo dun sa Revelation 3, ma makikita po natin dun yung letters to the seven churches. And yung last letter daw po ay Laodicea. And yung Laodicean church daw po yun, yun daw po yung nare-represent ng mga churches ngayon. I'll just read you one piece. He says, I know your deeds. You are neither hot nor cold. You are lukewarm. You are a mixture. It means you're not unsaved, but you're not really saved either. You are a dangerous mixture. You are a bit worldly and a bit Christian. And he says, I wish you would make your mind up. I wish you would either be hot, really Christian, full on, or cold, just go away. But because you are a mixture, and this is most of the church in the world, describing this church describes most of the churches in the world. Because you are a mixture, he says, I want to spew you up out of my mouth. I want to vomit you out. Right? Ayan. So yun nga daw po yung verse doon. Hindi daw po tayo mainit, hindi ka malamig. Mixture ka. Ano ka? Konting Christian, tapos worldly din. Ayan. Ang nangyayari daw po, sabi ni Lord, mamili ka na lang ng isa, make up your mind. Kung magpapaka-Christian ka, magpapaka-holy ka, or magpapaka-mundo ka, para go away ka na lang. Yun po. And most of the churches po, yun yung status ngayon, maligam-gam. And ang sabi po pag tayo ay maligam-gam, isinusuka po tayo ng Diyos. In verse 19 though, he says, Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. If you're taking notes, so that's Revelation 3 verse 19, if you're taking notes. Right next to it, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. How do you know if you are really a Christian? Paano niyo daw po malalaman kung totoong Kristiyano po kayo? How do you know? Hebrews 12. Do you have trials? Does God discipline you when you sin? Does he give you a bad conscience? Does he correct you? Does he give you a bad time until you behave? Ayan, sa Hebrews 12 daw po mababasa natin yon na Dinidisiplin tayo ng Lord, kinokorrect tayo, may mga trouble tayo para disiplinahin po tayo. This scripture and Hebrews 12 say the same thing. Hebrews 12 says, God disciplines those that He considers real. Sa Hebrews 12 daw po sinasabi na dinidisiplina ng Diyos yung mga kinoconsider niya na totoo. At the same po siya ng verse na Revelation 3.19. He disciplines you because he's preparing you for heaven. And dinidisiplina ka daw po ng Diyos kasi inahanda ka niya para sa langit. The same Hebrews 12 says something scary. He says, if you are not disciplined, you are not real. Ayan. At nakakatakot po yung sinabi din sa Hebrews 12 na kapag hindi ka daw po dinidisiplina, ibig sabihin, hindi ka totoo. 
So when you are disciplined, when you have trials, be happy. Kaya daw po pag dinidisiplina tayo at may mga pagsubok tayo, maging masaya daw po tayo. God is not ignoring you. Hindi ka daw po ini-ignore or hindi pinapansin ng Diyos. He is treating you as real. Ayan. Itinitreat ka ng Lord or kinoconsider ka ng Lord na totoo. The tribulation, how does the tribulation end for us? What happens to the real Christians when the tribulation comes? Ayan, yung tribulation daw po, paano daw po ba yung natatapos para sa atin? Ano daw po yung mangyayari sa mga Christians? Anybody know? Do you have to go through the whole thing? Uh, pagdadaanan daw po ba natin yung buong tribulation? The answer is yes. Ang sagot daw po ay oo. But it's only three and a half years. Pero sa loob lang daw po ng tatlo at kalahating taon. Remember COVID? Natatandaan niyo daw po ba yung COVID this 2019 lang? Practice. It's about the same time. It's about the same length of time as COVID. Or the lockdown, all that stuff. But you survive, right? The tribulation is about the same length of time as that. Ayan. So yung COVID daw po, di ba, nag-start siya ng 2019 and ngayon, almost three and a half years and you survive daw po. Yung tribulation daw po ay ganun din kasame na length of time. Kagaya, ganun kahaba din. At the end of the tribulation is not the end of the story. Antichrist will be here for seven years. The tribulation is only half, three and a half years. Why are we also here? It's this. God is trying to save as many as he can. Especially those who are lukewarm. They are sitting on the fence. They have not really decided if they're really for Christ or, you know, they're like that. So he sends the tribulation, the trouble, the trial to force them to choose. Ayan daw po. So yung tribulation nga daw po, nandito yung Antichrist for seven years. Pero bakit daw po nandito pa din tayo ngayon? And bakit magiging nandito tayo for three and a half years? Dahil gusto ng Lord na mailigtas yung mas marami pa na kayang iligtas ng Panginoon. At bakit daw po tayo nakakaranas ng mga pagsubok, ng mga trials, ng mga suffering na yan? to force them para po ano brasuhin na ng Panginoon na pumili kung ikaw ba ay susunod sa Diyos o ikaw ay manlalamig na lang God gives authority to antichrist to trouble the world Binigyan daw po ni Lord ng authority yung antichrist para bigyan ng trouble yung mundo including us Kasama po tayo doon But he does not have authority to have us. Pero wala daw po siyang otoridad na kunin din tayo para maging kanya. He, he cannot put his mark on real Christians because we are already marked. Ayan, hindi daw po niya pwedeng i-mark ang mga tunay na Kristiyano kasi meron na po talaga tayong marka. We can only have one owner. Isa lang po yung pwedeng magkaroon tayo na mark. If you are in Christ, you are already taken. Ayan. Kung na Kristo daw po tayo, taken na tayo. So why are we here? So bakit daw po tayo nandito? It's for those last people that will only repent under trial. Ayan. Yun daw po ay para sa mga tao na magsisisi kapag sila ay dumadaan sa mga pagsubok. God has to crush their pride. Kailangan daw pong wasaki ng Lord yung kanilang mga pagmamataas. God has to show them that on their own, they cannot live. Gusto daw pong ipakita ng Diyos sa kanila na sa sarili lamang nila, hindi sila mabubuhay. The stubborn, the arrogant, the proud, that he knows he can still reach, but only if he spanks them so hard that they cry. That is the tribulation. Mm. Ayan. So yun daw po yun, yung mga mga stubborn, mga pasaway, mga ma-pride. Ayan. Yung mga tao daw po na yan ay gustong disiplinahin, paluin 
ng Panginoon hanggang sa umiyak sila, yun daw po yung tribulation. But how will they know what to do? How will they know about Jesus if you are not there? So paano daw po sila maliligtas at paano nila makikilala si Jesus kung wala na tayo dito? So you are his witnesses even in the tribulation. Tayo daw po yung mga witness or mga saksi ng Diyos kahit na nasa tribulation po. You're not suffering the tribulation because of you. You're suffering the tribulation for the sake of those who still need to be saved. And hindi daw po natin pinagdadaanan yung suffering sa tribulation dahil sa atin, sa sarili natin, pero nararanasan natin siya para sa mga tao na kailangan pang maligtas. But Antichrist cannot have you. Pero hindi ka daw po makukuha ng mga Antichrist. Unless you rebel. Unless daw po na magrebelde ka din sa Diyos. But that's your choice, not his. Pero yun daw po ay decision pa rin natin. Choice pa din po natin yun. After three and a half years, the tribulation ends. In the Bible, you don't have to memorize these words, okay? But in the Bible, the words change. The first three and a half years is a word, thalipsis. You don't have to memorize that. It means to be troubled. Satan is allowed to trouble the world. When that comes to an end, what happens to the church? When the troubling is finished, it means there's no one God can reach by that method. So there's no need for us to still be here. So what happens? Rapture. The word is harpezo. It means to suddenly snatch away, to grab and... So that's what will happen. When the tribulation ends, no need for the church to be here anymore. God himself will snatch you away from this world to straight to heaven. Boom. It's also the time of the first resurrection. So Christians who died who are in the cemetery, they also go up at that time, right? After that, the word changes from thalipsis to orge. You don't have to remember that. It means wrath. Now, oh, sorry, I'm going too fast. Ayan. Uh, yun nga po, after nung three and a half years na daw po yun, so yung tribulation po na yun, yung hindi na daw po kailangan yung church na nandito, kaya ang mangyayari po doon ay rapture na po tayo. Ayan. And mag, magiging iba na po yung term. So after nung rapture, yung another three and a half years na po yun. But this time it's not Satan. This time it's our God. Ayan. Pero this time daw po, hindi na si Satan yun. Pero time na po ni Lord yun. It's not Satan's wrath, it's God's wrath. It's God's wrath na daw po. Hindi na daw po yung puot na, ng kaaway, pero puot na ng Diyos. When He has removed His people, He explodes. He pours out His anger and His fury against Antichrist and everything evil. We are not here for that. Ayan. Kapag nakuha na daw po tayo ng Diyos, na-rapture na yung mga faithful, ang mangyayari po nun, yung puot na ng Diyos, at doon na po sasabog yung Diyos, at ibubuhos niya talaga yung galit niya, yung puot niya sa mga Antikristo. So that's our message. We need to be like these mothers. We need to endure the labor pains because in our mind we're just thinking about what's coming. We're thinking about the baby. For us, the baby is the kingdom. At the end of the labor pains is Jesus coming. At the end of the labor pains is all the things we read at the beginning. No more death. No more tears. No more sorrow. No more rich and poor. You know, that's the baby. But first, the labor pains. And... We have to be able to stand. So you need the truth. So study the word of God because that's your belt that holds the rest of the armor on. Believe what he has said. Live by that. Walk it. Don't just be hearers only. Do it. Why? Because someone is watching you. How many pastors in this room? Put your hand up if you're a pastor. Why aren't all your hands up? <laughs> Everyone here is a pastor. Do you know what pastor means? 
In Hebrew, it's the word ra'ai. Ra'ai. It means he who goes in front. He who leads. Right? Here's a pastor. Who are you leading? Siya daw po ay pastor. Sino daw po yung nililid niya? Who are you leading? Holding in your arms. Every mother, every mother is a pastor to her children. Lahat daw ng nanay ay pastor. Are you at school? Who's at school? Pag nasa school ka daw po, sino yung nasa school? Yeah. You are a pastor. You're a pastor din daw po. Whether you like it or not, kahit ayaw mo sa gusto mo, someone else is looking to you may taong nakatingin sa iyo to follow your example para sundin yung halimbawa mo whatever you do ano man ginagawa mo that's a pastor yeah, may sumusunod sa iyo yun ang pagiging pastor that's why we're here kaya tayo nandito so that's what god wanted you to know yun lang daw po yung gustong sabihin sa atin ng Dios have the truth magkaroon ng belt of truth live righteously Mamuhay ng matuwid. Be holy, Maging set banal. apart from the world, not the Maging hiwalay sa mundo. Expect what he said to expect. So that when it happens, you are not surprised. Amen. Wag daw, 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 daw po tayo ma-surprise. Asahan na natin yung mga dapat nating asahan. And you know what to do in it. At alam daw po natin yung ating gagawin. You are his witnesses. Your neighbor depends on you to tell him the truth. Ang mga kapitbahay daw po natin ng ating kapwa ay nakadepende sa atin na masabi po natin sa kanila yung katotohanan. And no matter how hard it gets, na kahit daw po gano'ng ka kahirap, think of the baby. Isipin daw po natin yung baby. No matter how hard those labor pains, think of the baby. Ayan, kahit gano'ng kahirap yung labor pain ng isang nanay, inisip niya yung baby. You ask any mother, Amen. when the baby is born, they forget Yeah. Pain, kapag, kapag daw po yung baby, di ba mga nanay? <laughs> kapag nanganak na, nakalimutan mo na yung sakit na pinagdaanan natin. Ganon only, din daw po sa ating uh, Christian life. It's only joy, life. right? Only joy. That's us when the kingdom comes. Amen. Okay? Don't worry that you're small. God always uses the least, the small, the most humble. That is where the spirit is. Amen. Ayan. Wag daw po tayo mag-alala kung maliit lang tayo. Ganun. Yung mapagkumbaba daw po yung tinitignan yeah. ng Diyos. Okay. Alright. That's enough. Okay po. That's enough. Thank you. Ayan. Thank you po, Pastor Wari. Ayan. So, what happens now? Um, I will give uh, my uh, message, my, the summary of the message that you have okay. said. And then after that, we're going to pray for Uh, those who need healing, sa lahat po may mga may prayer request, uh, tawagin po natin sa harap. Pero mag-share lang po ako ng message tungkol po sa, ano, summarize lang po natin yung message ni Pastor Mark. Kuli ka lang po yung aking okay. notebook. Awesome. Ayun. So gusto ko lang po i-confirm yung ating mensahe ngayon. Uh, kung naaalala nyo, yung message natin last week bago yung prayer and fasting, ano yung title? Naalala nyo ba? Yung New Year's message natin, naalala nyo? Hindi. Hindi, hindi yon. Yung New Year's message. To celebrate or not celebrate 2024. Tama? At doon natutunan natin about first coming and second coming. Natutunan natin, sabi ko sa inyo, di ba, na um, hindi magiging madali ang 2024 dahil ang Antichrist ay patuloy nakikilos. Nakakatuwa lang na ito yung message natin. Alam nyo, si Pastor Warwick and I, hindi naman kami ganun kadalas mag-chat. Pero una, na-share niya sa akin ang message niya ay tungkol sa how to not fall away na nag-confirm sa akin, kasi kung naaalala nyo, yun din yung sinabi ko sa inyo. ba diba, nung last, last Sunday, sinabi ko yun sa inyo na tayo ay uh, nasa huling mga araw, amen, at gusto ng Diyos na maging tapat tayo, amen, na, da, na itong mga huling araw, maraming manlalamig, amen, and sobrang nagtutugma yung message po ni Pastor Warek ng Panginoon sa buhay niya. Ibig sabihin, yun talaga ang gusto niya para sa rowa. Amen. And namiss lang ako kasi kanina nung kumakanta tayo nung um, Holy, Holy Forever, alam nyo nasa gilid ako, 
umiiyak ako. Alam niyo kung bakit? Hindi siya connected sa song, pero habang kinakanta natin yung song, alam niyo pinakita sa akin ng Lord yung Revelations 21. Na hindi ko ina-expect na yun pala yung verse natin today. At umiiyak ako kasi pinakita sa akin ng Lord na darating yung, ayun, ayun, na ako, darating yung time na mangyayari yung Revelations 21. Na siya na yung magiging hari. Na siya na yung magiging sovereign over all. Na wala nang tears, wala nang, yung lahat ng pinagdadaanan ko ngayon ay matatapos din. Umiyak ako, ganun sa gilid. Tapos yun pala yung message. Nakaka-amaze. At yun din yung message niya para sa ating lahat. Kaya naglagay po ako ng application. May application tayo. Number one, always wear the belt of truth. Yun, nakita natin kanina. Pag suot-suot natin yung truth, yung belt of truth, hindi tayo mamalalamig. Amen? Hindi tayo malalayo sa Panginoon. Sino dito ang nagde-devotion? Araw-araw. Amen. Amen. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, may point pala yun. Yan, kasi pala sinusuot mo yung belt of truth. Amen. Kaya pag nagbabasa tayo ng Word of God araw-araw, umaaten ka, huwag natin kayayamutan ang salita ng Diyos. Amen. Amen. Yun pala, yun nagme-maintain. Kaya ka pala nandito ngayon. Kaya ka pala lumalaban pa rin. Kaya pala nagpapatuloy ka kasi lagi kang nakakapit sa Word of God. Ipagpatuloy mo yan. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, pagpatuloy mo yan. Ayan, number two is be faithful and be humble. Ayan, sabi nga ng Panginoon, yun yung mga ginagamit ng Panginoon. So, nakakatuwa lang sa church natin kasi we believe that there are still miracles. Amen? At naniniwala tayo, may mga miracles galing sa kaaway, may miracles galing sa Diyos. Kaya nga yung ating mission, manifest God's supernatural power and love. And according sa, sa testimony ni Pastor Warwick, meron talagang Deliverance. Di ba, nangyayari naman yan sa church natin. Meron totoong healing na galing sa Panginoon. Pero again, ito yung tatandaan natin, kagaya nga na sinabi ni Pastor Warwick, lahat ng miracles always points to Jesus. Always points to salvation. Always points to transformation. Always points to someone to be faithful to the Lord. Amen? Amen po. Kaya, willing, willing naman ng Lord gamitin tayo, pero para magamit niya tayo, sabi nga, natutuwa ko sa HSPM natin, we have Holy Spirit Prayer Meeting service every Wednesday, and it always points to, to being uh, intimate with the Holy Spirit, to being intimate with God. Hindi tayo naghahanap ng miracles para maging powerful tayo, amen, para masabi natin magaling tayo. We want to help other people, but always tayo ay instrument lang. Vessel lang. Parang si Pastor Warwick, di ba? Di naman siya sumigaw-sigaw, di ba? Pero, nag-cast out yung demons dun sa, sa babae. Di ba? Amen po. Sino gustong gamitin ni Lord? Anong gagawin? Ano yung number two? Be faithful and be humble. Ayan. Be faithful and be humble. Number three, look at what the pain is bringing. Ayan. Natutuwa ako sa labor pain. Kasi dati, I always read about labor pain, but, ay, uh, nalo lang siya naging buhay sa akin nung na-experience ko siya. <laughs> When I experienced that labor pain, dun ko lang talaga na nasabi na para nga talaga siyang troubles ng end times. Sino sa inyo sinusubok ng Diyos? Wala. <laughs> patindi ng patindi ang pagsubok. Sino aamin na talagang dumarating ka sa point na gusto mo nang bumitaw? <laughs> kumantay. Gusto mo nang bumita. Kasi naalala ko talaga, nung nagli-labor ako, kasi na-emergency labor ako, ayoko na. Habi ko, Dok! Sumisigaw talaga ako. Ayoko na po, pahintuin nyo na. Gusto kong mawala yung pain. Gusto kong siyang ma mawala yung pain. ba diba? Pero, syempre, nilalabas ko si Kaina. Kaya, andun pa rin yung pagkapit natin. Talaga palang darating sa point bilang isang Christian na, aayaw ka. Alam mo yun, yung parang, gusto mo nang huminto. Parang, pagod na ako. Ayoko na. ba diba? Pero kumakapit ka pa rin. Pero dumarating yung ganong emotion. Na parang ayaw mo na. Pero still, ito yung word natin. Look at what the pain is bringing. Sabi nga ni Pastor Warwick. Ano yung bunga kapag kumapit pa rin tayo? Yung Revelations 21. Sino gusto may experience yung Revelations 21? Amen. Amen, ba diba? Darating yon, may time na darating na wala na. 
Huwag muna natin yung asamin ngayon. Tiisin lang natin. Iri! <laughs> Iri mo lang. <laughs> diba? Iri lang pagka nasasaktan ka. Umiri lang tayo kay Lord. Diba umiiyak tayo? Sino yung umiiyak na nagre-labor siya? Diba? Iyak natin kay Lord. Diba? Pag may pinagdadaanan kang masakit, just cry out to God. Diba? Lord, help me, comfort me. Kukunin lang natin kay Lord yung strength. Amen? At no, pagtatagumpayan natin kasi love na love tayo ng Diyos. Amen? Amen po. Ayan. And number four, be disciplined instead of complain. <laughs> kasi marami sa atin, kapag sinusubok, ano nangyayari? Nagre-reklamo. Diba? Lord, bakit mo ako dinadaan dito? Diba? Lord, nasin- naninisi na tayo sa iba. Diba? Kasi siya eh. Kasi yung sitwasyon eh. Kasi itong mga nangyayari sa akin eh. We always complain. Pero hindi natin tinitignan na dinidisiplina pala tayo ng Panginoon. Al- ako personally, lagi ko yung na-experience. Kapag may nangyayari sa akin maganda, alam ko may tinuturo sa akin si Lord. Meron siya, meron akong maling nagawa or merong meron siyang baka nalalayo na pala ako, hindi ko namamalayan. Binabalik niya ako sa kanya. I believe that kasi I experience that. I experience that and I believe ngayon na totoo ako kasi na-remind sa akin na lahat pala ng anak ng Dios ay dumadaan sa ganun. That's because we are his daughters. We are his sons. Amen. So ngayon pag may pagsubok tayo, ano gagawin mo? Magpadisiplina. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, magpapalo ka. Pag-aralan mo kung ano yung tinuturo sa'yo. Amen? Kasi di ba, merong mga taong pag pinapalo, nagwawala. Instead na makinig. Di ba? May mga batang ganyan, pag pinapalo, wa! <laughs> Lalong nagwawala eh, di ba? Parang hindi sila nakikinig. They don't listen, di ba? Hindi ganon. Dapat pag pinapalo tayo, sorry, you, you ask ano yung pagkukulang mo. Ano yung mali mo? Ano yung nangyari? Alam nyo, yung magulang natin. Sino dito may mga magulang? Sino parents? Hindi naman natin pinapalo yung anak natin dahil trip lang natin, di ba? Na parang, baluhay ko nga to! Di ba? Nag-enjoy ka sa pagpalo? Hindi. It hurts us, di ba? When we, when we discipline our children. It hurts us. Pero we love them. That's why we're doing it. Amen? Amen po. So, tandaan nyo, pagka pinapalo kayo ni Lord, hindi ibig sabihin nun, hindi ka niya mahal. Sa lahat na nagdududa sa pag-ibig ng Diyos, palitan na natin yung mindset galing sa kaaway yan. Mahal ka ni Lord, kaya kanya dinadaan dyan. Gusto niya ma-mold yung character mo. Gusto niya maging humble tayo. Gusto niya maging close tayo sa kanya. Gusto niya makarating tayo sa langit. Amen? At gusto niya gamitin tayo para yung mga kapamilya natin ay makakilala din sa kanya. Sabi nga ni Pastor Warwick, we are pastors. We are uh, the light and salt of our family. Di ba? So, working place natin. Tinitingnan nila example natin. Amen? So, kung paano, ka, paano mo pinagtatagumpayan yung pagsubok mo ngayon, ganyan din nila pagtatagumpayan yung mga pagsubok nila. Sino gusto yung mga kapamilya niya maka-overcome? May mga kapamilya ka, may mga pinagdadaanan. Pakita mo sa kanila, this is how you overcome. Diba? This is how you overcome. You give your life to God. Diba? You let Him mold you. You let Him change you. Diba? Amen po? Amen. So marami po ba tayong natutunan ngayon? Amen. So ngayon tayo po ay dadako sa um, prayer request. Sige, tayo po tayong lahat. And pray muna tayo. Let's pray. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, O God. Sige po, um, pa-search natin sa Panginoon yung ating puso. Ano yung tinuturo sa atin ni Lord ngayong umagang ito? What is the Lord dealing with us right now? Let's ask Him to help us be changed, be transformed. Baka meron sa atin na-encourage, may mga pinagdadaanan ka, pero ngayon na-encourage ka to remain faithful. Pwede ka rin mag-pray na, Lord, help me be faithful. O kaya ikaw naman yung dinidisiplina, ikaw pala yung pinapalo. Pwede kang mag-sorry, sorry Lord. Patawarin niyo po ho kung nagko-complain ako instead of trusting you, instead of being disciplined by you. Forgive me, Lord. And right now, let's just surrender our lives to God. Surrender natin yung mga situations natin, yung mga troubles natin. 
yung ministry natin, yung families natin, yung health natin, surrender lang natin sa Diyos. Let's all believe what God can do for our lives. He loves us. He is our Father. Hindi niya tayo hahayaang mapahamak. Sige po, hayaan lang natin ng Diyos mangusap sa atin sa oras na to. Thank you for your word, O Lord. I believe sa oras na to, natatanggap natin yung strength from the Lord. Nakakabalik yung iba sa atin ng mga nagfo-fall away na nakita natin yung na mirror natin yung life natin through the word of God. Let's all come back to Jesus. He is our savior. He is our redeemer. He is our lifeboat. He is faithful to us and he will remain faithful hangga't kumakapit tayo sa kanya. Thank you Lord. Thank you Jesus. Thank you for being faithful to us. Forgive us Lord sa lahat ng times na naging unfaithful kami sa iyo, oh God. And thank you for preparing heaven for us. I would like to invite Pastor Warwick to pray for the church. One, <clears throat> one moment. This is a, called a Talit Gadol. When Jews pray, they wear this. And it signifies these things here. Ito the, daw po ay sumisimbolo. The cords and the knots. Yung cords and knots. It's the same number as the number of the laws of God. Yun daw po ay same number ng mga batas ng Diyos. And this covering. At yung covering reminds us that we are covered ay nagpapaalala sa atin na tayo ay covered that he is above us na siya ay mas mataas sa atin that he is keeping his law na siya ay kinikip niya yung kanyang mga batas and his law at yung mga batas niya is for our salvation ay para sa ating kaligtasan so i don't put this on very often hindi daw po niya lagi yung sinusuot but it seems good to do so today pero nakakabuti daw na isuot niya ito ngayon. Okay. So Jesus is a Jew. Si Jesus daw po siya kayong mga Jews. So I'll start to pray for you in Hebrew. Pagpe-pray niya daw po tayo in Hebrew. Let's pray. Okay, let's pray. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kovold Makotola Alem Ve'ed, Yeshua, Hu Hamashiach, Hu Adon Hakon. That's what Jesus will sound like praying. When you're in heaven, you're speaking Hebrew. Pag tayo daw po ay nasa langit, tayo daw po ay magsasalita ng Hebrew. I'll repeat in English. Ulitin niya daw po sa English. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Makinig Bl daw po tayo, Israel, ang Lord at ang Diyos ay iisa. Blessed is the name. The glory of his kingdom has no end. Ang glory daw po ng kanyang kaharian ay walang katapusan. Jesus, Jesus, Lord of the universe. Siya ang Panginoon ng kalawakan. Father, we thank you. We come before you. Amang Diyos, kami nagpapasalamat sa iyo at kami lumalapit sa iyo. Search our hearts and minds. Siya sa atin mo aming puso't isipan. Know us. Kilalanin mo kami. Forgive us. Patawarin mo kami. Draw near to us. You have said, if you return to me, I will return to you. Sinabi mo po na kung kami ay babalik sa iyo, ikaw ay nasama sa amin. Let us draw near then with confidence. 
kami uh, tayo pa ay lumapit sa Diyos ng may confidence that you hear us na tayo ay pinapakinggan ng Diyos that you will keep your word for us na ikikip niya yung kanyang mga salita para sa atin that you cannot sin na hindi daw po siya magto-turn therefore you cannot lie hindi daw po siya magsisinungaling therefore you cannot break a promise hindi niya um, babaliin ang kanyang mga pangako therefore everything you have said for us lahat ng mga sinasabi mo sa amin will come to pass ay mangyayari for these precious brothers and sisters para sa mga precious na mga kapatid na ito who you made for me to be family na tinuring mong kapamilya ko i thank you that you have said salamat po na sinabi mo he who has begun a good thing in you na siyang nagpasimula ng mabuting bagay sa iyo is faithful to finish it ay tapat upang tapusin ito Boruach Elohim, come, Spirit of God, finish perfectly what you began. Spirit ng Diyos, tapusin niyo po ng perfectly kung ano yung sinimulan mo. In this part of your body, sa bahagi na ito na iyong katawan, that is Roa. Na Roa. Whether they are here, uh, sila man ay nandito, whether they went away somewhere else, sila man ay umalis, Whether they are yet to come, Asan man sila pupunta, they are yours. Sila ay sayo. You paid the same price for each one. Dinayaran mo ang kaparehong halaga para sa bawat isa. Therefore, anoint each part. Anoint nyo po yung bawat tahakin. So that all together. Upang ang uh, lahat. They can accomplish your purpose. Ay ma-accomplish yung layunin mo. Here. Dito. In the new church, sa bagong iglesia, and in this place, at sa lugar na ito, among the people that need to be saved, sa gitna ng mga taong kailangang maligtas, for their lives, para sa kanilang buhay, for their food and their money, sa kanilang kakainin, sa kanilang mga pinansyal, for their hearts and minds, para sa kanilang puso at isipan, for their spirits, para sa kanilang espiritu, be yourself. Ikaw po ay maging ikaw. Be our father. Ikaw po ang maging ama namin. Remember every day. Alalahanin niyo po ang lahat ng ito. The daily bread that we need. Ang araw-araw na pagkain na kailangan namin. Work everything together. Pagsamasamahin niyo po ang lahat. For our good. Para sa aming ikakabuti. For our salvation. Para sa aming kaligtasan. Even in the middle of labor pains. Kahit na sa gitna ng labor pains, give us the joy of salvation. Bigay mo po sa amin kagalakan ng kaligtasan. And a clear vision. At malinaw na vision of your coming. Ng iyong pagbabalik. Amen. 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 Um, sa lahat po ng gustong magpa-pray, pwede pong lumapit sa harapan. Mga personal po, mga healing request, pwede po tayong lumapit sa harapan. So we can pray for you. Siguro dito na po natin i-end ang ating service. God bless everyone. God bless po sa mga nasa online. And we'll take this time so Pastor Wari can pray for your personal yeah. needs. Let to pray for healing, right? God always heals. Ang Diyos daw po ay laging nagpapagaling. But not always the way you think. Pero hindi kadalasan ng ine-expect natin. Sometimes your illness 